Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Asghar. How are you doing? Assalamu alaikum, Kiran. Alhamdulillah, I'm good. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah, I'm doing well. Uh, so first of all, Asghar, I would want you to just, you know, give yourself a short introduction with my, my viewers. So that would be great. So then we shall begin with the discussion. Thank you so much, Kiran. First of all, thank you so much for inviting me on your channel. And it's an honor. I've uh, looked at your channel. Mashallah, you're doing, doing a great work uh, interviewing such, you know, diverse people with, you know, on such diverse topics. So I must, you know, comment you on that. Um, for my introduction, I'm Dr. Aska Asad. I'm a dermatologist. Currently, I'm working in Lahore with an institution uh, by the name of Cosmetic uh, Institute of Dermatology and Cosmetic Surgery. So we've got four branches in Lahore and um, we are dermatologists and also we've got a team of cosmetic surgeons with us as well. Uh, I've done my specialization from Pakistan in dermatology and I've been working as a dermatologist um, for the last, I would say, six years now in this institution. So that was a brief uh, introduction about myself. Amazing introduction. So let us begin, Dr. Aska. First of all, as you know, we are discussing about skin care, you know, our, and our beauty. How can we keep our skin, you know, fresh? So in that regard, what do you think that uh, the importance of a sunblock, which you know that some of the people or ladies, they still ignore it. They think, oh, oh, oh why should we spend money on it? So what would be your thought on using sunblock in today's day and age? I so would like to definitely listen on that. Karen, that's a very important question. The thing is that, you know, especially in, you know, in the era we live in right now, uh, we've got so much pollution all over the world and especially in Pakistan it's not only the sunlight it's the pollution that we you know uh, encounter every day in our life so sunblock is a major thing you know that protects us from first of all all kind of harmful light and uh, also you know it gives a layer to your skin so you know pollutants and everything else that is also that also creates a barrier from all those things so i encourage my patients and you know not even patients young girls to start using sunblock from early age um jinki you know the patients who have skin problems like acne like pigmentation melasma um it is you know 100% essential for them to use sunblock you know without that uh, it's very difficult to treat these conditions as well but even if you have a normal skin and, and you're not uh, you know experiencing any skin conditions even then sunblock is a must start you know encourage your children to start wearing sunblock to school and um, you know, that takes you a long way in life. Aapki, aage ja ke zindagi mein, that will help you. Aapki skin ke andar, uh, you know, photo aging, ye sari cheezein, they get delayed. So it's a very good investment in your skin. Ek aur choti si baad, you know, uh, people tend to, um, you know, not use the sunblock because, you know, some years before, uh, jo sunblock aate the, they were really thick and oily. So you, people, you know, uh, they felt uncomfortable wearing the sunblocks but with you know advancement and everything there are a lot of variety in sunblocks we have gel based you know which are just like primers so easily you don't even know there's something on your face and you can easily apply makeup on the sunblock we've got spray ons now so it's very easy sometimes you have to use two to three sunblocks to you know see which sunblock is suiting you but in the end, again, emphasis, it's a must for a good skin. All right. Now, when we talk about sunblock, of course, this is must. But like, you know, if for my viewers, uh, information and guidance, what would you suggest? Like, you know, SPF uh, 30, we always see on the product that this uh, product is like, you know, SPF 30. This product is SPF 50. And even though uh, I've seen 60 as well. So if you can just, you know, elaborate a lot more and, and for children, you know, um, I think which product if you think so that you know children they should also put on sunblock and if they should so what sort of product should it be light or sensitive please just elaborate that a little bit 
Uh, care for children, uh, there are a lot of moisturizers now which have sunblock in it. This SPF 30 that we have. That is perfectly fine and, you know, safe to use on children as well. Uh, regarding the SPF, um, you know, um, whatever SPF, it's safe, 30, 40, 50, that's fine. Uh, you know, uh, when uh, you go on the uh, higher SPF after that, it doesn't really make a difference. Ke wo kitna zada SPF hai uske after, hai? So um, the thing is, if you have a lot of sun exposure and you're always out, if you've got some job like, uh, you know, outdoor job, then you can go on a higher SPF. But um, 30, 40, even 50, that's fine. I'm okay with 30 SPF as well. And the thing, and another, another important thing is that um, whatever SPF you're using and whatever sunblock you're using, it only has a, it, its effect for two hours. Mm -hmm. So after two hours, you have to reapply your sunblock. This is something which, you know, uh, people tend to ignore and think that we go till, you know, in the evening. That's not true. If you're uh, going to your work in the morning and if you apply your sunblock, it is essential that if you're traveling back and it's still sunny you have to reapply your sunball so that is something that you have to keep in mind all right okay now in regards for if i just ask you exfoliation it's a new terminology as a buzzword people now getting to know more about it and uh, of course toner which is another product people they use it and some masks and facials you know what would be your thought and like you know doing a sort of exfoliation and if we should do some sort of exfoliation what products would you recommend and uh, like you know in a week how many days we should use on exfoliation toners and some mask and facial what would be your thought and it all depends on your skin type and also in which age group you are right for a young skin, I recommend that you should be, you know, cleaning your skin with a good soap, you know, a mild soap or a face wash. It should be mild and, you know, uh, moisturize your skin and um, use the sunblock. So now for a young teenager girl, that's the regime. Unless they're having breakouts and they have something to acne or any other issue, then, you know, things change. When you go in your uh, 20s and early 30s, obviously the regime changes that, right? Um, also, it depends on the kind of skin type you have. If you have dry skin, too much ex exfoliation would, uh, in fact, harm the skin, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, oil in oily skin, it do uh, it does help. So exfoliation with any good product, you know, we uh, as a dermatologist, we recommend stronger medication. Exfol we uh, give you know some um, um, stronger medications, which you know you use once a week for exfoliation. But that kind of products, they should only be used under doctor su supervision. So any good, I won't take any brand names, but any good brand, don't use, you know, those, uh, I'm sorry, I'm using, you know, taking those Chinese and Korean unless they are, uh, you know, brand names because they have harmful uh, chemicals in it, in them. So, no, you know, bleaching agents, steroids, they can, I've seen girls using those products and ending up with, you know, massive amount of acne, hair growth on their face. So use a good, pro good product, exfoliator. And, uh, you know, um, exfoliation you can do on your weekends, again, depending on your skin. If you have an oily skin, you can do it, you know, every other day, every third day. If you have dry skin, do it on a weekend just to cleanse your skin and then immediately apply toner because what exfoliation does is it, you know, it, it opens up your pores a bit it cleanses your pores so we have to close it down with the toner so uh that's the science behind it but if you have any issues like you have acne you have uh, uh you know eczema on your skin if you have pigmentation on your skin then i would strongly recommend that to see a doctor and get under supervision of a doctor for all these procedures because you might end up you know uh, making things worse for yourself
because okay. I've seen patients for acne, they are doing, you know, home remedies, doing home facials, and that tends to increase the acne. So um, your question was, if any recommendation, again, a good company, a known brand, and um, see a cord, and it should be very mild. So you don't end up having any problems with your skin. Hmm. Okay. Now, another problem, which, uh, you know, normally ladies, they have it uh, with age, you can say max 30 or 35, they have some marks or on their faces and maybe wrinkles is another issue. So uh, how we can, you know, ladies can get rid of these problems like in regards to wrinkles and some spottings and some marks. Yeah, marks the pigmentation. It's a very common thing, especially in our part of the world, because we've got, you know, a, a type four, which is a, you know, a, a little bit darker than the uh, Caucasian skin, um, European skin. So we end up uh, having pigmentation, especially after childbirth as well. So for that, I recommend some lightening agents, again, uh, depending on, uh, you know, how uh, deep and how uh, bad is the pigmentation. And we also recommend some uh, procedures like microderm abrasion, you know, very light medicated facials, you know, which just uh, uh, take care of the superficial layer of the skin uh, to, you know, lighten those uh, 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 pigmented marks. Um, there are a lot of medication available for that. And um, again, um, that again should be under doctor supervision because um, if you're using high um, potency medication, uh, people tend to, you know, end up uh, burning their skin. Um, you must have heard about the ordinary products. They're very good. Uh, if you're out of Pakistan and, you know, I usually recommend my patients who are out of Pakistan and I can't prescribe them anything from uh here so but again you have to be careful on what combination you're using how much strength of a you know retinols they're very popular these days but always start off with a very low potency retinol and not every day use moisturizer because it dries out your skin so i've seen a lot of patients start using retinols and then end up burning skin. So I'm not trying to scare, but what I'm trying to emphasize is that um, you should always be, because a lot of things are available now, but if you don't have the knowledge and, uh, you know, to how to use them, you make end up making things worse. Uh, regarding the wrinkles, for wrinkles, you know, um, creams, uh, I know a lot of creams are advertised now for wrinkles, the, you know, uh, they don't, can't really take uh, the wrinkles away. You can slow the progression with retinol serums and retinol creams. But if you have developed uh, wrinkles like on forehead, around your eyes, uh, around your, you know, your um, uh, uh, nose, for that, um, first of all, Botox is a very good treatment uh, option. Um, nothing to be scared of it just paralyzes your muscle a little so you know when you're um, uh, making expression the, the lines we develop on the forehead they lessen so um, we can talk about uh, botox later on uh, yeah. uh, in detail uh, also, there are a lot of lasers and uh, procedures which, you know, uh, um, induce collagen production. Mm -hmm. So when you have collagen production, it uh, helps in getting rid or lessen the uh, wrinkles on your face. Like there's CO2 fraction laser, you can have PRP done, you can have radio frequency with microneedling, microneedling with, uh, you know, various kind of um, serums, mesotherapy. So all these uh, procedures uh, uh, help in uh, making new collagen and uh, giving you a youthful appearance. Okay, for my viewers, I would just, you know, uh, I think um, uh, 
inform that if they have any sort of questions in regarding that, what should we ask from uh, my dermatologist? Like, you know, particularly they want to know about something or some procedures they want to go into, but they still, you know, have some sort of, you know, questions or they are still in confusion. confusion. So definitely we would be waiting for your questions. So according to that, I would design my second episode of this uh, particular in regards for skincare session. Uh, Dr. Aska, because today what I was planning that we shouldn't discuss a lot more just in one session, because if you're just going to go slowly and gradually, so my viewers, they would also be able to understand properly. So last question, I think we should just, you know, ask now, and then I would just, you know, discuss with you for the next session. And definitely we're going to bring it up because my viewers would be more, you know, intriguing, just getting to know more about skincare routine and stuff. So um, two questions just take from my side for now, because I have, I also, myself want to know a lot more it, this is uh, I think a broad topic we cannot cover but still you know we're try, trying our level best that as much as possible uh, in regards for serums these days you know, people, ladies, uh, they are just, you know, getting crazy to spend a lot more on this. And those sort of serums which are available in the market, they're so expensive. What would be your recommendation if somebody really wanna, you know, go for the those sort of serums? Uh, serums, you can say uh, effectiveness, if you can discuss a little bit about that. And some alternatives also, those ladies who cannot afford those expensive serums, so what they should do, you know, maybe you can say from their kitchen, how any tips, any, you know, their tips and tricks they can use. And uh, another question, you just take it. So then you just, um, you know, try to cover both. And, uh, you know, beautiful and nice uh, night skincare routine, like, you know, ladies they, before going to bed, what should they do? What sort of moisturizer or the way or, you know, uh, a care sort of uh, routine they should just, you know, follow before going to bed. So then on both questions, please respond. Uh, sure, Kiran. Uh, regarding what you were saying, right, uh, you know, before these questions, I agree with you. It tends to get very confusing for the patient if you're discussing too many procedures at one time. But sometimes, you know, uh, when a patient comes in, uh, he or she doesn't have just one problem. So there are different uh, things going on on the face and we need different procedures for, uh, for that. So what I always do is I discuss the uh, you know, procedures um, one by one with the patient briefly. And I write down all the name of the procedures which I've discussed with the patient. So just they can go back home, read about it. Everything is available on Google these days. And so, you know, they should know that what they're getting into and what uh, the procedure I'm talking about, you know, looks like and what they can expect after the procedure and obviously we don't do you know multiple procedures at one time we always make a plan for a patient you know that this is the most important thing that can be my recommendation or the patient can tell me you know this is my main concern i want to get rid of this thing first and then we'll go to the other problems so we design the treatment according to that Okay, so your uh, question was about the serums. Yes, a lot of serums are available with different companies, different uh, strengths, and they are good serums. Always use over the available over the counters low strength serums. Dermatologists have we always have you know higher strength so we know when to prescribe and you know how to do that so about serums you know the most common ones are vitamin c serum yeah. retinol serums um nicotinamide creams and serums are very popular these days alpha arbutin you know these kind of serums so vitamin c is good mm -hmm. and um it you know uh, gives your skin a youthful appearance uh, it lightens down the pigmentation mm -hmm. um uh, but it again it dries out the skin so when you're using a vitamin c serum you could use it in the afternoon in the morning anytime you want but always apply a moisturizer on it so your skin doesn't get dry retinol serum it's good for anti-aging uh, you know when you're in your 30s you can start using it uh you know for girls who are in their 30s i would recommend not using it every day every other day or you know maybe even less than that and uh Another recommendation that I would uh, make is whenever you start use, using any serum, start off with, 
you know, a, a less time, start with, uh, with two hours application in the afternoon or at the night. If your skin is okay with it, you can increase the time in the next week, you know. And if you're still okay with it, if, for example, retinol serums, if, you know, in two weeks, you can apply for four hours. And in the third week, if your skin is tolerating it, you can go for overnight. So always make your skin comfortable with the product. So over-the-counter serums, which can be safely used, are, in my opinion, vitamin C serum and uh, retinol serums, niconamide. It also helps with the acne and also your um, pigmentation. And um, the rest of the things, again, consult your doctor first. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> there are... Uh, a lot of companies, you know, uh, which have these serums, um, you can always go for a higher uh, priced one. That is okay. That's your choice. Um, I don't know about, you know, over there, but in Pakistan, we have got, you know, multiple companies and every company has a good product. So I have options of vitamin C with, you know, a reasonable price. I've got higher prices as well. So it all depends on what your pocket allows you. And uh, regarding the night care, Karen, again, as I've been emphasizing from the start, that um, it all depends, you know, if someone has a particular question about their, um, their skin type or, you know, their age, then I can, you know, give a, you know, exact answer. But for a good skin, for the most important thing, which we knew, we all tend to forget is wash our face at night before going to sleep. You know, that is something that most of us tend to ignore. I know we are too tired or we are, we are like so tired from the day that we say, you know, yeah, we're okay, our face is clean. So wash your face thoroughly. And if you can just like slightly exfoliate it, uh, that is even fine. But if you don't have time for that, wash your face, apply any serum that you want, you know, if you're applying a retinol serum, if you're applying a vitamin C and apply one serum at one time. So don't do a mixture of serums. You know, you can't apply vitamin C, vitamin, retinol and everything at one time that will just, uh, you know, burn off your skin. So any serum and then thoroughly moisturize your skin. Dry skin always tend to age for, uh, quickly. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, wrinkles, they appear um, on your uh, skin. And another recommendation that I do, uh, do recommend if you, if you have time is when you're applying the serum, then you apply the moisturizer. Do a little yoga off on your face. Mm -hmm. You know, do these upward movements for some, you know, one to two minutes on your neck like this, you know, around your eyes like this. This, you know, um, promotes blood circulation in your face and it will reduce the puffiness of your face. So try to do it uh, once before you go to sleep. And once you wake up in the morning when you wash your face and you're applying your morning, you know, my morning moisturizer before you make that, do this exercise again and you'll start noticing a difference in your face, you'll, um, in, in, you know, in a few days. So that's a small tip that you know i would advise okay so if you were asking there was another question that uh, if you can't afford the serums okay so the most common thing you know people ask me about is basin aloe vera. uh if you can apply lemon on our face milk on our face honey you know lemon um is very strong you know, it is an acidic medium. It doesn't suit everyone. Mm -hmm. So you have to be careful with it. Milk, honey, that, if it suits you, uh, what it does is just give you a little moisturization. So I would advise instead of wasting milk and honey, you can always apply a good moisturizer. You know, there are a lot of good moisturizers. Uh, if we talk of internationally, there's CeraVe, there's Physiogel, there's Cetaphil. You know, these are good. They have got oil-free um, uh, products. They've got oily. So depending on what your skin is. Uh, aloe vera doesn't suit everybody. Aloe vera, I've uh, seen uh, allergic reactions develop. 
सेम इज विद बेस है सो इफ यू रियली वॉन्ट टू यूज इट आप अपनी स्किन के ऊपर थोड़ा सा टेस्ट स्पॉट कर लें और देखें इफ इट सूट्स यू वो आपको रेडनेस तो नहीं कर रहा वो आपको इचिंग तो नहीं कर रहा और अगर आपको ऐसी कोई चीजें कर रहे हैं तो प्लीज अवॉइड इट मैं लोगों को बहुत ज्यादा होम रेमिडीज इसलिए नहीं रोकती क्योंकि यू नो वो एक होती है दे हैव देयर बिलीफ ऑन इट बट इफ आई एम इफ यू कमिंग टू मी एंड आई हैव गिवन यू अ प्रॉपर प्रिस्क्रिप्शन देन यस आई वुड टेल यू के अवॉइड इट क्योंकि फिर मुझे पता नहीं चलेगा कि आपको मेरी मेडिसिन से कोई प्रॉब्लम हो रहा है या अब आपकी होम रेमिडीज आपको तंग कर रही है Uh, yeah uh, doctor aska uh, like you know for skin test normally would have heard that if you just want to uh, do the skin test some particular areas of your you know your body you just have to do the skin test whether i think uh, the wrist side and the elbow side around. yeah arm around side. and then yeah. behind the ear is it uh, is it okay behind it okay yeah this i wanted to confirm because people they would best confuse. is is best place is upper arm so ye to ye nazar bhi Uh, Ota, this is uh, you know just mark the area, and this is the best place to test uh, any product that you want to use. Even for hair dyes, you know, uh, mm-hmm. some people have hair dye allergies. Yes. So mm-hmm. um, for them, I always, if you're using a new hair dye, just do a test spot over here, and then you can see if there's any problem. If there's any redness, there's any itching, any you know small uh, uh, you know pustules develop over there. So you know you're allergic to the actual product. All right. For my viewers, uh, I just have to tell them that um, we would be discussing in the next episode uh, some procedures, and especially the procedures what you are doing in your clinic. We're gonna discuss. I would just ask you in the next episode uh, some other you know products as well. and uh, then some products which we always think like you know these should be like you know go to products which i would also discuss with you that we're going to discuss and bring up about these things and uh, i think for now and yeah i would be waiting for my viewers questions as well so then we would definitely going to you know bring them up in our session uh, so for now i think i'm going to close the session thank you so much dr aska for thank taking you. out some time and uh, soon gonna see you inshallah in next episode until take good care of yourself you too take care thank you karen and lafiz <laughs>